Hello and welcome to your midterm. I am here to guide you through Choosing My Name by Puanani Burgess. So let's go ahead and go forward. And I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about, this is from a teacher's page. Um, her name is Madison Stewart. And she uh, gives this information when she's teaching this particular poem. Uh, it says, teachers are keepers of names. Some corner of my brain is cluttered with Alexanders and Amanis and Keanus and Kylies. The first day of school, working down the roster, teachers wield an appreciate. And I'm sorry, great appellate power. How many, oh my, poma kai ma ke ku kuna au ka la me kahos go by po. Um, Zijas go by Roy or Charlon Ruths go by Shari. Epic young people abbreviating themselves, smoothing out syllables so nothing crashes in the throat, renaming themselves because they know from experience that the classroom is an arm of colonization and white supremacy. Then there are the Heavens, who go by Oliver, and the Liana Reyes Sol uh, Solanos, who go by Liana Solano, and the Davids, who go by Sunny for whom the name on the roster is an unshakable weight, renaming themselves as an act of great vulnerability and bravery. All this is to say, the names we are given, the names we give ourselves, the names society gives us, are powerful kindling for poetry. So I kind of wanted to start out with that, and I hope that you noticed like how I stumbled over those names and how I actually said, oh no, right? That was a microaggression. If that was someone's name, I would have given that person a little bit of something to be ashamed of for their name. So we're going to look at a poem that really talks about this uh, before you read. Before we get to the actual reading portion, um, I want you to think about some of the things that we've already learned in this class. We've talked a little bit about what does your name mean to you? Um, do people pronounce your name correctly? And how does that make you feel if they do pronounce it incorrectly or if they do feel it correct or do pronounce it correctly? Um, what does that mean for culture and society? And I think one of the most important things is do different names make you feel like a different person? Um, my son has two very clearly different names. He goes by his formal name in school, um, but at home we have always called him a nickname. And it is almost like he has two different identities. Okay, so hopefully you've got a few seconds to think about that. And now we are going to go forward and get started with the reading. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to listen to Puanani Burgess actually recite the poem herself. And then I will put this up. I have a poem that I'd like to share. It's called Choosing My Name. When I was born, my mother gave me three names. Christabel, Yoshie, and Puanani. Christabel was my English name, my social security card name, my school name, the name I gave when teachers asked me for my real name. It was a safe name. Yoshie was my home name, my everyday name, the name that reminded my father's family that I was Japanese, even though my nose, hips, and feet were wide, the name that made me acceptable to them who called my Hawaiian mother Kuroi, black. It was a saving name. Kuanani is my chosen name. It's my Pico name connecting me to the Aina and the Kai and the Poekahiko. It's my blessing, my burden, my amulet, my spear. So now that we heard Puanani Burgess read, let's go ahead and analyze the poem. Let's just go over a little bit of the poem. So one of the things that she starts out with is that she has three names, right? So let's highlight that she has three names, right? So she has Christian Bell, Yoshie, and Puanani, right? And then she goes on to talk about how this is her English name, her social security name. And then it's really interesting because she says that it is her safe name, right? And you have to think about kind of what does that mean that it is her safe name? Well, it's safe in that she has a name that she's not going to be um, immediately thought of in 
racial terms, right? Um, it's the name that the teachers ask. She can say it. It's the teacher's going to say it correctly. It's uh, right there on her social security. So this is why it would be considered her safe name. And very interesting how they call it her real name in the end. She puts that in quotation marks, thinking that for real, right, she probably doesn't consider this her real name. But that's what other people, like what the school and the system call her real name. Um, as you move forward, you'll see that she talks about her name, Yoshie, and that this was her everyday name. And so this is probably what people called her, like at school, I mean, at home and other places like that. And it reminded her of her father's family. And I love how she adds about her nose and her hips and, and her wide feet, right? Um, and that they called her mother black, right? Kuroi. Here, she's talking about how those things are getting into her mind, right? That they become this implicit bias against her own self in many ways, showing that she's not good enough, right? Oops, sorry, let's just put, uh, not good enough, okay. And then when she moves forward, she goes to this really beautiful name, Puanani, and she says it's her chosen name, right? So it's even more special to her because she got to choose this name herself. Um, it's who she chooses to be and what she chooses to be called. And then she says, my Pico name connecting me to the, I, I'm guessing it's Ayana, and I can't remember exactly how she said that. Um, well, let's go ahead and go to a Hawaiian dictionary and look up the words. So here I am on the, the Hawaiian dictionary, and let's go ahead and look up what Pico is. So what is Pico? Go ahead and click this first one. Um, it's your umbilical cord. Right? So what a beautiful metaphor that it's connecting her back, right? That um, umbilical cord. Um, um, let's go ahead and go back to the poem. Now she says that it connects her to the Aina. Aina. I don't know and we don't know what that is either. So let's go ahead and go to the dictionary and look it up. So here's Aina. And let's see if we can get it correct. Um, we need the one that's going to have, here we go. It looks something like this. Um, and it means something to do with her land and her land use. So it's the connection back to the land, right? So I'm going to go ahead and write this, right? That pico equals um, core, and which is such a beautiful metaphor that she's being connected back to the land in the same way that a baby is connected to her mother. And then the aina has to do with her land, right? Um, and then she moves forward and she says, the kai and the poe ka, pa, ka hiko. Poe ka hiko. That's my, my kind of best guess. If you want, please go back and listen to her say it again because she does such a better job than I. Um, and let's go ahead and look those words up and see what does that mean. So let's go ahead and see what the kai is. So here's the Hawaiian dictionary kai. It says sea or sea water. Um, and so they also give other ideas that it's the gravy, the sauce, the dressing. So we'll make sure that we write down that that is the sea or sea water. And now let's go ahead and go back and make sure that we look up the po e ka hiko. See it. So the poe kaiko is related to the old, the ancient, their ancestors. Um, so when we go ahead and go back, we're going to look at. So now we know that the kai is the sea, and that the poe kaiko is her land, I mean, her ancestors. So that is the name that roots her, right? It's that umbilical cord that roots her back to the land and her ancestors and the, the sea. Um, and then here's my favorite part is that she says it's her blessing and her burden, right? So it's a, both a good thing and a bad thing, right? To be um, part of that, those indigenous roots to her and her mind, that it's her amulet, right? The thing that gives her um, strength, and then her spear, also the thing that allows her to fight and keep fighting. All right. So let's go ahead and do a quick review here. 
Um, it says, what do the author's three names mean to her? Well, Christian Bell is a kind of safety, right? It also is a connection to colonization. It is the erasure of her indigenous self. And it is related to whiteness in that she's able to erase those parts of herself and fit in in some way. The Yoshie is her Japanese name. It's the name that makes her acceptable to a certain part of her family, but also reminds her that she's not quite good enough. And then Puanani is her choice name, right? Um, it gives her mixed emotions because it is both her blessing and her burden, but it's the, the name that connects her back to her land, her past, her ancestors, and it's her strength. And if you want to um, go over here and just kind of think about some other ideas to consider is that she talks about kuroi, right? That blackness that if you're not white, then you're othered and you're considered black, right? The aina, which is um, the land, the poi kaha, kaha iko is the um, ancestors, the idea that the kai, the sea, um, and the piko, that umbilical cord. So all of those things are forming different images um, that that really root that poem in her trying to find her identity in those three things. So now I am really excited to tell you guys that it is your turn. I want you to write a name poem just like this. So you need to have about two to five stanzas and each stanza should pretty much talk about a name, right? That you are called or um, a name that you identify with and see if you can create some beautiful images and stuff in the same way that um, Puanani Burgess does. And then I want you to just write me a little paragraph about that, um, what it means to you and why you chose that and you chose those words and maybe those metaphors, okay? All right, with that, I wish you the very best of luck and I cannot wait to read your poems.